Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first story is titled, My Grandfather's Secret Treasure. Growing up, my grandfather was always a fascinating figure in my life. He had a way of captivating us with his stories of his travels and adventures when he was young. He was always full of energy and life, but there was always one story that he never shared with us. He would always give us a sly grin and say, I'll tell you when the time is right. Unfortunately, that time never came as he passed away before he could share this particular tale. After his passing, we were all grieving, but it was especially hard for my father. He was my grandfather's eldest son and had always been close to him. It was tough for him to deal with the loss of his father, and it affected him deeply. However, a few months after my grandfather's death, we received the news that he had left us something in his will. We were excited to see what he had left us, but we were also filled with a sense of sadness, as it was a painful reminder that he was no longer with us. We sat down with the executor of his will, who handed us an envelope that contained a map and a letter from my grandfather. The letter explained that the map led to a treasure he had hidden many years ago. He had always wanted to share this story with us, but he wanted to wait until he was sure we were ready to handle it. The map led us to an old, run-down house on the outskirts of town. The house was abandoned, and it looked like it had been that way for many years. The map led us to a particular spot in the house, and as we began to dig, we found a small box buried in the dirt. It was locked, but luckily we found the key on the map. As we opened the box, we found a letter from my grandfather that explained the significance of the treasure. He had been a soldier in World War II and had been stationed in Germany. During his time there, he had come across a stash of gold coins that had been buried by the Nazis. He had taken some of the coins and hidden them away in that box. We were all shocked and excited by this discovery, but we also knew that we had to be careful. We didn't want to attract attention to ourselves or the treasure, so we agreed to keep it a secret and divide it amongst ourselves. Years went by and we all went our separate ways, but the memory of that treasure stayed with us. One day, my sister and I decided to revisit the house and see if there was anything else we could find. As we made our way through the house, we stumbled upon a locked door. We knew we had to find a way to get it open, so we searched high and low until we found the key. As we opened the door, we found ourselves in a room filled with treasure. There were jewels, gold coins, and stacks of cash. We couldn't believe it. We had hit the jackpot. We quickly filled our bags with as much treasure as we could carry and made our way out of the house. However, as we were about to leave, we heard footsteps behind us. We turned around to find two men who had followed us into the house. They demanded that we hand over the treasure, but we refused. We tried to make a run for it, but the men were faster and stronger. They tackled us to the ground, and we struggled to fight them off. Just as we thought it was all over, a police car pulled up, and the men fled. The police officers helped us up and took a statement from us. We told them everything, and they promised to investigate. We made our way back home, shaken but relieved that we had made it out alive. Over the next few weeks, we received updates from the police. They had managed to track down the men who had attacked us and had arrested them. They had also recovered a significant amount of stolen goods from the men, which included items from other burglaries they had committed. It turned out that they were part of a larger criminal ring that had been operating in the area for years. The police also asked us to provide more information about the treasure we had found. We gave them all the details we could remember and explained that it had belonged to my grandfather. The police were impressed by the story and told us that they would do their best to investigate the origins of the treasure. Months went by and we had almost forgotten about the treasure and the police investigation until we received a phone call from a detective. He told us that they had managed to track down the origins of the treasure and had discovered that it had been stolen from a museum during World War II. The treasure had been looted by the Nazis and had been missing for decades. The detective also told us that the museum was grateful for our assistance in recovering the stolen items, and that they had decided to award us a small portion of the value of the treasure as a reward. We were thrilled and felt honored to have been part of something so significant. The money we received from the museum reward was significant, and we decided to donate a portion of it to a local charity that helped war veterans. It felt like the right thing to do, and we knew that it was something that my grandfather would have been proud of. The rest of the money was divided amongst us, and we used it to pay off our debts and invest in our futures. We made sure to honor my grandfather's memory and use the treasure for good. Looking back on everything that had happened, we realized that the treasure had brought us closer together as a family. It had also given us an opportunity to help others and make a difference in the world. 
We knew that my grandfather would have been proud of us, and we were grateful for the experiences that we had shared. In conclusion, the discovery of my grandfather's secret treasure led us on an unexpected adventure that taught us valuable lessons about life, family, and the importance of doing what is right. We learned that sometimes the greatest treasures in life are the ones that cannot be measured in material wealth. We will always cherish the memories of this incredible journey and the legacy of my grandfather that inspired it. In my opinion, this story about the discovery of the grandfather's secret treasure was quite intriguing. The way the treasure was hidden away for years and the excitement of finding it really caught my attention. The addition of the dramatic twist with the two men trying to steal the treasure and the police investigation added an extra layer of suspense to the story. I also appreciated the update on how the family used the treasure for good and the significance of the treasure's origins. The next story is titled, The Battle Against My Negligent Neighbor, How I Fought for My Rights and Won. Living in a peaceful neighborhood is a dream for many of us. However, it can quickly turn into a nightmare when one negligent neighbor can disrupt the tranquility of an entire street. Unfortunately, this is what happened to me when my new neighbor moved in next door. At first, everything seemed fine. My neighbor seemed friendly enough, but it wasn't long before I realized that they were complete slobs. Their backyard was littered with trash, and it wasn't just bags of garbage, but old furniture, toys, and other discarded items. The stench was unbearable, and the sight of it made me feel anxious and angry. After several attempts to talk to my neighbor about the issue, they promised to clean up their backyard, but nothing ever changed. Finally, I decided to take action and hired a lawyer to write a letter demanding that they clean up their yard or face legal consequences. They ignored the letter and continued to neglect their property. As the days passed, things only got worse. I noticed that they had started burning their trash in their backyard, causing the air to be filled with a thick black smoke that could be seen from far away. When I confronted them about it, they shrugged it off as if it was no big deal. One afternoon, as I was sitting in my backyard, I smelled something burning. I looked over and saw that my fence was on fire. I quickly called cop and the fire department arrived promptly, putting out the fire before it spread to the rest of my property. When I spoke to the firefighters, they informed me that the fire had been started by my neighbor's careless burning of trash in their backyard. The flames had spread to my fence, causing extensive damage. I was angry, frustrated, and scared. I had no idea what my neighbor was capable of, and I didn't want to live next to someone who was so reckless and negligent. I called my lawyer and started the legal process of suing my neighbor for the damages caused to my property. It was a long and grueling process. We had to go through several rounds of mediation and negotiations before my neighbor agreed to settle the case out of court. They agreed to pay for the damages and promised to clean up their yard. I thought that this was the end of it. However, a few months later, I received a notice from the city that my neighbor had violated several city ordinances regarding property maintenance, trash disposal, and fire safety. The city had fined them thousands of dollars, and they were now being sued by the city for violating these ordinances. The neighbor ended up losing the case and was ordered to pay hefty fines and do community service. They also had to clean up their backyard and bring it up to code. They finally sold their property and moved out of the neighborhood. In the end, I was relieved to have won the battle against my negligent neighbor. But the experience had left me wary of new neighbors and more vigilant about protecting my property. I have since installed security cameras and worked with my community to make sure that everyone is aware of the importance of maintaining their properties and keeping our neighborhoods safe. As an update, I've heard from the new owners of my former neighbor's property, and they have made significant improvements to their backyard, making it an enjoyable space for all to enjoy. In my opinion, this story is a great reminder of how important it is to maintain our properties and be respectful of our neighbors. It's unfortunate that the situation had to escalate to legal action, but I can understand why the author felt they had no other choice. It's also great to hear that the new neighbors have taken it upon themselves to improve their backyard and be good members of the community. Overall, it's a cautionary tale of how negligence and carelessness can have serious consequences and how standing up for our rights can make a positive difference. The next story is titled, When Revenge Gets the Last Laugh, A Cautionary Tale. Renting a house was supposed to be a dream come true for me. I had always lived in cramped apartments, and the idea of having space and privacy was exciting. But my joy was short-lived when I met my neighbor, Mike. From the moment I moved in, Mike made my life a living hell. He was in his late 40s or early 50s, and despite seeming like a fully functional adult, he had never lived outside of his parents' home. 
He spent every possible minute cleaning or admiring his truck, so he practically lived in the driveway. When he wasn't bragging about some a-hole move that he just pulled on someone, he was hitting on the wives and daughters of anyone on the street. But things got worse when Mike started to invade my privacy. He would sneak into my yard to peek through my windows and see what I was doing. At first, I thought it was just a one-time thing, but he kept doing it repeatedly. I was uncomfortable, but I didn't know what to do. One day, I caught him mowing my side yard. He argued that it was his property and kept insisting that he was right. I tried talking to my landlord, but he didn't seem to care. I even called the police, but they couldn't do much either. Mike seemed to get a kick out of it and kept harassing me in any way he could. It was not just me. He would stare at my guests and make comments about them. He would hit on the women in the neighborhood and even tried to talk to a 17-year-old girl. Despite numerous complaints, he didn't seem to stop. One day, he threatened to break into my house and smash my cameras and computer. That was the final straw. I decided to move out. But before leaving, I discovered that Mike was committing workers' compensation fraud and using the money to start his own landscaping business. I recorded him in action and sent the videos and pictures to the fraud department of the workers' compensation office. Months passed, and I had settled into my new place, thinking that justice had finally been served. But then, I received a package in the mail. Inside was a note that read, You may have won this round, but be careful. Revenge can have consequences. There was no signature, and I had no idea who had sent it. I started to feel uneasy. I had no clue what those consequences could be, but the note had sent a shiver down my spine. I decided to do some digging and found out that Mike had been released from jail and was living with his parents again. However, the police also informed me that there had been a string of burglaries in my old neighborhood, and they were investigating them. I couldn't help but wonder if Mike was involved. The thought of him trying to seek revenge on me for reporting him crossed my mind. I became paranoid and started to take extra precautions, like installing more cameras and alarms. Days passed, and there was no sign of Mike. However, one day I received another package in the mail. It was a box with a note attached that read, Enjoy your new place while you can. I hesitated before opening it, but curiosity got the better of me. Inside, there were photos of me taken from different angles, like someone had been stalking me. I was shocked and scared. I called the police, but they said they couldn't do anything without evidence. I had to take matters into my own hands. I decided to dig deeper into Mike's background and discovered that he had a history of stalking and harassment. I shared all the information with the police, and they finally arrested Mike for stalking and harassment. He was charged and convicted, and this time he was sent to prison for a long time. I finally breathed a sigh of relief. Mike was locked away, and I was safe. I thought I had learned my lesson and that it was over. But I was wrong. Revenge had more consequences in store for me. A few weeks after Mike's conviction, I received a call from the workers' compensation office. They informed me that they had discovered a video of me recording Mike without his consent. It was illegal to record someone without their consent, and I had violated his privacy. I was now facing criminal charges. I was devastated. I thought I had done the right thing by reporting Mike, but now I was the one in trouble. I hired a lawyer and tried to explain my side of the story, but it was too late. The court had already decided to prosecute me. The trial was long and stressful, and I had to face the consequences of my actions. In the end, I was found guilty of violating Mike's privacy and had to pay a hefty fine. It was a harsh lesson that I had to learn, and I regretted my actions deeply. Years passed, and I moved on with my life. I got married, had kids, and moved to a different state. I had almost forgotten about Mike and the revenge that had caused me so much trouble. But one day, I received another package in the mail. This time, it was a letter from Mike, who was now out of prison. He had found my address and had sent me a warning. He told me that he was coming for me and that I should be prepared. I was terrified and I didn't know what to do. I contacted the police, but they couldn't do anything unless he showed up. I had to take matters into my own hands again. I decided to move to a more secure location and install better security systems. Months passed and there was no sign of Mike. I had almost forgotten about the threat, but then one day I received a call from the police. They had caught Mike trying to break into my old house. He had been stalking me all this time, waiting for the right moment to strike. I was grateful that the police had caught him before he could harm me or my family. Revenge had caused me so much trouble, and I had learned my lesson the hard way. I realized that it's never worth seeking revenge, as it can lead to unintended consequences that can haunt you for a lifetime. 
In my opinion, When Revenge Gets the Last Laugh was a well-written cautionary tale about the consequences of seeking revenge. The story kept me engaged from start to finish, with its vivid descriptions of the protagonist's creepy neighbor, and the tension that built up over time. The unexpected twists and turns made the story even more interesting, and the second dramatic ending caught me off guard. It was a good reminder that revenge is never worth it, and that it's always better to take the high road and seek justice through proper channels. The last story is titled, Neighbors in Conflict, A Tale of Empathy and Forgiveness. I had been living in my apartment for almost a year, enjoying the peace and quiet of the suburban neighborhood. However, that all changed when a new family moved in next door. They were loud, obnoxious, and seemed to have no consideration for their neighbors. Every evening from 7, 9 p.m. I could hear them banging pots and pans, shouting at each other, and playing loud music. It was impossible to concentrate on my work or get any rest, and I soon found myself becoming increasingly frustrated and angry. I tried talking to them about it, but they just laughed and told me to mind my own business. They seemed to take pleasure in making my life miserable, and I felt powerless to do anything about it. One night I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed a pan and began banging it loudly, hoping to annoy them as much as they had annoyed me. But instead of stopping, they just turned up the music and started screaming even louder. For weeks we were locked in a battle of wills, each side trying to outdo the other in terms of noise and disruption. I complained to the landlord, but he said there was nothing he could do unless I had proof of any wrongdoing. Finally, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I installed a camera that faced their apartment, hoping to catch them in the act of making noise. And sure enough, one night, I caught them on camera, banging pots and pans and shouting at each other at the top of their lungs. I took the footage to the landlord, who was finally convinced to take action. He called the family in for a meeting and threatened to evict them if they didn't stop the noise. At first, I felt a sense of satisfaction and vindication. But as the days passed, I started to feel guilty for my actions. I had never stopped to consider the reasons why they were making noise or what might be going on in their lives. One day I decided to go next door and talk to them. I knocked on the door nervously, not sure what to expect, but to my surprise the woman who answered the door was friendly and welcoming. We started chatting and she told me about the difficulties they had been facing lately. Her husband had lost his job and they were struggling to make ends meet. They had a young daughter who was going through a difficult time and often acted out by making noise. The woman herself was dealing with health issues and the stress of caring for her family. As she spoke, I realized that I had been too quick to judge and seek revenge without knowing the full story. I apologized for my behavior and offered to help in any way I could. We ended up having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about the challenges of life and the importance of empathy and understanding. In the end, we came to an understanding, and the family promised to keep the noise down during my work meetings. I also learned to be more patient and understanding towards others, and that sometimes it's worth taking the time to listen and empathize. However, a few weeks later, the family faced an unexpected tragedy. The daughter, who had been struggling with mental health issues, had a breakdown and was hospitalized. I was shocked and saddened by the news, and knew that I had to do something to help. I organized a fundraiser in the community, and with the help of my neighbors, we were able to raise enough money to cover the family's medical expenses. I also visited the hospital and offered my support, and we ended up becoming good friends. In the end, what started as a conflict between neighbors turned into a story of empathy and forgiveness. I learned that sometimes all it takes is a little bit of understanding and compassion to resolve a difficult situation. I also learned that behind every action, there is a story, and that we should always take the time to get to know our neighbors and understand their circumstances before jumping to conclusions. As time passed, the family and I developed a strong bond, and we started spending more time together. We would have dinner parties, BBQs, and even went on vacation together. It was hard to believe that just a few months ago, we were at each other's throats. Looking back, I realized that our conflict had brought us closer together, and that sometimes it takes a little bit of adversity to build strong relationships. I was grateful for the lessons I had learned and the friendships I had made, and I knew that I had grown as a person because of it. Update. Several years later, I received an unexpected call from the woman next door. She sounded panicked and asked if I could come over immediately. I rushed over to their apartment and found the family in tears. The daughter, who had been struggling with mental health issues, had taken a turn for the worse and had been hospitalized again. This time, it was much more serious, and the family was unsure if she would make it. I stayed with them for hours, offering my support and comfort. 
We prayed together, talked about old times, and reminisced about the moments that had brought us together. It was a somber but beautiful moment, and I felt grateful for the friendship we had built. Several weeks later, I received another call from the woman. This time she was crying, but they were tears of joy. The daughter had made a full recovery and was finally coming home. To celebrate, the family organized a block party, and everyone in the community was invited. It was a beautiful event, filled with music, food, and laughter. The daughter was there too, and she seemed happy and healthy, surrounded by the love and support of her family and friends. As the party wound down, the woman next door pulled me aside and handed me a small box. Inside was a bracelet, handmade by her daughter as a thank you for all the support I had given them over the years. I felt tears welling up in my eyes and hugged her tightly. Looking back, I realized that sometimes the most difficult situations can lead to the most beautiful outcomes. The conflict with my noisy neighbors had brought us together, and our friendship had become a source of strength and comfort for all of us. I knew that we would always be there for each other, no matter what life threw our way. In my opinion, Neighbors in Conflict, A Tale of Empathy and Forgiveness, is a heartwarming story that reminds us of the power of understanding and compassion. It's easy to jump to conclusions and get angry when our neighbors do things that annoy us. But this story shows us that there's often more to the story than meets the eye. I love how the protagonist takes the initiative to try and resolve the conflict by installing a camera and talking to their neighbor. And the fact that they end up becoming friends and supporting each other through a difficult time is truly touching. It's a great reminder that we should always try to see things from the other person's perspective and be open to forgiveness and understanding. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.